The altimeter is one of the most important flight instruments to have in your plane. It's actually part of your required equipment list for day VFR and 91205, also known as a tomato flames. It relies on the static system and requires you to change the altimeter setting, which would be the outside air pressure. But how does this very important flight instrument work? And what is barometric pressure as well? Well, let's go fly in. All right. To start off with, let's talk about barometric pressure. Barometric pressure, also known as atmospheric pressure, or air pressure is the force or weight of this air surrounding us. So like, right now, the air around me, there's barometric pressure. In flight training, we learn that standard temperature and standard pressure is 15 degrees Celsius and 29.92, or 29902, or, or however you want to say it. But what is that 29902 number? Or what is the what is the pressure number? Well, 29902 is the standard pressure in inches of mercury. That's how we calculate and measure um, barometric pressure. Barometric pressure is also a metric that we can use to predict the weather. Uh, if the temperature and dew point spread are close together, so like let's say it's 16 Celsius outside and dew point's 14 Celsius, and we have low pressure then we could probably expect some thunderstorms later. Uh, since barometric pressure decreases with altitude, that's how the altimeter works. But why? Why does it work like that? Why? Why? Just why? Why does it work? On the ground before our flight, we usually listen to the ATIS or AWOS, or ASOSphere report has that. Do we, we, we listen to that to hear the weather conditions before our flight. It's going to sound a little bit something like this. Airport information Lima, weather 1700 Zulu, wind 150 at 5, visibility 20, ceiling 22,000 broken, temperature 22, dew point 5, altimeter 3028. Alright, cool. Our altimeter setting is whatever it is. I don't know because I'm putting in the footage after I record. Barometric altimeters are calibrated based on the assumption that atmospheric pressure drops at a fixed rate as altitude increases. However, local weather conditions can affect this, making it crucial to adjust the altimeter accordingly. In aviation, pilots must regularly calibrate their altimeters to ensure accuracy. Inaccurate readings can have serious consequences, especially when flying at low altitudes or in between mountain ranges. There is an exception when flying through Class Alpha airspace over 18,000 feet. In Federal Aviation Regulation Part 91-121, Section 2, each person operating aircraft shall maintain the cruising altitude or flight level of that aircraft at or above 18,000 feet to 29.92 inches of mercury, or 29.92 inches of mercury. Hey, you guys want to know a fun fact about altimeters really quickly? Did you know hikers and climbers also use altimeters? They help uh, determine the elevation of a current location. They help determine the elevation of a current location. Hmm. They help determine the elevation of a current location and assist in weather forecasting if they see a rapid change in barometric pressure. Like if it were to go from high pressure to low pressure really quickly. Like I said, predicting storms. Now, how does this damn thing work? Inside a simple barometric altimeter, there is a sealed metal chamber, a spring, and a pointer that shows an altitude in feet or meters. Usually it's feet. Well, most likely it's. The chamber expands as the air pressure decreases and contracts as it increases, which bends the spring and moves the pointer. As altitude increases, the air pressure becomes more expanded. So, that's why you have to wear oxygen mask or have the plane pressurized when you're above like 12,500 feet, for example. You just don't have the air density. But that's also how the altimeter works. When the air density gets lower, it's going to read a higher altitude. If you set the altimeter to 299 or 2, your um, altimeter will not show your actual field elevation, only if you have the right pressure setting for outside air. While barometric altimeters are widely used, there are also different types of altimeters, such as GPS and radio altimeters. Uh, these different altimeters could provide more accurate readings under certain conditions. However, each type has its own limitations and ideal use cases. Like GPS altimeters are used for LPV, LNAV, and VNAV approaches, and radio altimeters, well, I think we all know what radio altimeters do. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard. Altimeters are remarkable tools that blend ancient technology into something super beneficial, 
that every aircraft flying in the world today is required to have one, VFR or IFR, especially IFR, because you wouldn't want to be at like in a cloud and be like 20 feet to the ground. Whether flying high in the sky or flying low to the ground, understanding how altitude is measured is very essential to flying. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Next time you're about to fly, play with the little altimeter like pressure knob before you go fly and look at the little altitude changes. This is also how we can find pressure altitude as well. That's like a whole another video. Basically find pressure altitude when you're on the ground. Set your altimeter to 299 or two, tell you your pressure altitude. Uh, if you learned something today, make sure you please go hit that like button. Go subscribe down below because I want to make more of these. And also, if you have video ideas, comment that down below. I wouldn't mind uh, making a video on that. Until next time, happy flying.